So let's go ahead and pull it. And let go. Manually take off. Whoa. Brushless motor. What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. And today we're checking out the Bayang Toys X22 GPS. It is a 1080p Wi-Fi FPV GPS positioning. 3-axis gimbal this time, brushless motor, altitude hold, RC quadcopter, ready to fly. So let's open up the box and check it out. All right, we got everything out of the box and laid them out on the table. And I did somewhat assemble the quadcopter a little bit. It did not come with the landing legs already attached, so I attached the landing legs as well as the 3-axis gimbal apparatus. It comes fully assembled and all you got to do is just slide it in and connect it to the quadcopter using that harness and you are powered up and ready to go. The camera did come separate and there's some Velcro strips already on the camera as well as the platform on the gimbal. So all you do is just stick it on there and they do provide you with this urethane like rubber band. So further secure the camera from ejecting. And I did attach the camera to the micro USB uh, cable that was provided from the gimbal. And I did power it up and it does work so hopefully we get some nice stable videos because of the three axis gimbal now the quadcopter is identical to the Bayang Toys X21 it's got the same black matte finish that soft velvety finish and the remote control is identical as well it comes with that black velvety finish as well now this quadcopter is the single gps version of the x22 the double gps version is also available so what is the difference between the two well i think the only difference is the remote control it comes with another gps chip embedded in the remote control so this version the single gps version does not have the follow me and the circle me function from the hard remote control but the x22 that comes with the double gps will have that function but with this model you are also able to do that follow me and circle me utilizing the wi-fi phone app so if you want to save some money this one comes in at a price of 178 dollars whereas the dual gps version comes in at a price of 238 dollars that is a whopping 60 dollar difference so save some money and get this version if you don't really care about the follow me and the circle me function on the hard remote so let's go over some of the stuff that came in the box all right so we get two sets of props in which one of them i'll leave on here so we're going to put the props on before we go for our demo flight and we got the balance charger as well as the wall connector and the barrel stall connector to connect to your balance charger and we need to get the us converter connector if you are in the us because it comes with the euro connector so place that on the side and we got a little bag of goodies containing a screwdriver a metal rod and that metal rod is to tighten up that bullet style prop nut and we got the usb sd card reader a uh, few sets of foam pads uh four of them in total to place underneath of the landing legs and a couple of extra screws and a allen wrench as well put that on the side and here's the phone clip that attaches to the remote control and all you do is just remove the plastic antenna and or the fake plastic antenna and place this phone clip right on its place and you can put your phone here and it does fit my iphone 6 plus but i found out that uh, my iphone 6 plus will not connect to the wi-fi network of this quad cutter for some reason it does connect but it will not give me any video so i'm going to have to use the ipad once again and this is like the third time this week i think that my iphone 6 plus will not connect to the wi-fi activated network or does not want to show the video of the wi-fi network of this wi-fi quadcopters so i'm not going to be using this phone clip so here is the battery that comes with it it is a 11.1 volt 2200 milliamp size battery 30c supposed to give you a flight time of about 8 to 12 minutes now not a very long flight time and i think the flight time has diminished from the x21 because of the three axis gimbal so it's going to be drawing some power from this battery as well 
So the app that you want to download in the App Store for the Wi-Fi FPV is called the FYD GPS app and it is a free downloadable app in the App Store so go ahead and check it out. Now the motors on this quadcopter, the X22 is identical to the other Bayan toys. It is the 2212 920 kV motors and the control distance on this thing is about 360 meters that's what it says on the product page and the fpv distance is 320 to 430 meters so around the same as the x21 and here is the instruction booklet and the addendum to the instruction booklet showing you the wi-fi fpv app and how to go about downloading it with the QR code right here and it goes on to show you how to do everything on that as well as the waypoints follow me and all that stuff so a very nice pamphlet that they give you as an addendum to the Wi-Fi phone app or the instruction booklet and here's the instruction booklet and it goes on to show you everything you need to know somewhat so that is the instruction booklet so that is just about it and the remote control yes let's go over the remote control here and here is a button here i'm not sure if we have speed control so we'll check that out and this button over here is the one key to take off and one key to land button and we got the camera tilt capabilities from the hard remote yeah so we can tilt the camera down and tilt the camera up utilizing the three axis gimbal so that is just awesome and the buttons over here has no function so if you were to have gotten the dual gps version these two buttons on the bottom will be the circle me and the follow me button these buttons all have functions as well the one in the middle is the return to home the one on the top is to take a photo the one on the bottom is to take a video and the one on the right is the helis mode now the one on the left is also to turn on the gps and turn off the gps so we'll check it out and see if all of the functions work on this quad cutter so to arm and disarm the motors both sticks to the bottom and in will arm and disarm the motors as well as both sticks to the bottom and out will arm and disarm the motors now to calibrate the gyros of this quadcopter, uh, left stick to the left and to the top and right sticks to the bottom and to the right will calibrate the gyros. And if you place the left stick to the bottom and left and right six to the top and to the right it will initiate the compass calibration so remember to do that as well so let's go for a little demo flight with the Bayang toys x22 gps with a three axis gimbal all right here we go with the demo flight of the Bayang toys x22 so let's go ahead and power it up all right put the cable inside close the lid And there is this beep going on. That is a safety feature of the Bayang Toys X16 or 21 or now the 22, that the battery is still connected. So once you got done flying it, you don't forget to disconnect the battery. A safety feature, which is good. So turning on the quadcopter and turning on the transmitter and pull the throttle stick all the way to the bottom and check out the gimbal. It will calibrate in a second here. There you go, the gimbal has calibrated. Now, the transmitter is still blinking in red. It should send out a couple of beeps and the red light will go solid. All right, I have to do that throttle up and down, kind of to the mid position and pull it back down and that kind of initiated it. Now the red light is solid. The green light is still flashing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the compass calibration. Don't stick to the bottom and to the left. Pitch stick to the top and to the right. It will send the quadcopter into the calibration sequence mode. And this one is a little different, guys. It says to hold one of the arms and wave the quadcopter on top of the remote control in a figure eight. So let's go ahead and do that. Like a big figure eight infinity design and it should give out another couple of beeps and another three beeps a total of five beeps so we'll see if it does that there you go and hopefully the light is solid green but it is not so we didn't do that correctly we got to wait until the lights go solid green so let's go ahead and do that again it's kind of funky it's not that 360 
degrees horizontal rotation and the flip forward and the roll like the previous Bayang toys. This is kind of weird. And I think this is the way to do it. The instruction booklet tells you to do it something like this. So hopefully I'm doing it correctly. <laughs> let's see. The light is not turning. So let's go ahead and do the calibration one more time. And wave it around like a wand. Okay, check it out. The green light has become solid green, so we are good to go. Calibration of the um, compass has been completed. Now we're going to do the calibration of the gyros. Those stick to the top and to the left, pitch stick to the bottom and to the right. And gyros have calibrated. Now we are good to go. Let's check out the tilt adjustable camera with the remote control here. Using this little trim button, you can tilt adjust the camera. So that is pretty cool. You can also do this on the phone app as well. Talking about the phone app, let me go ahead and turn on my iPad. Okay, going into the settings. Connecting to the Wi-Fi network of the Bayang Toys. It's YD 1080p, so let's connect to it. Hopefully it connects. I've been having problems connecting. Oh, there you go. We are connected. So here's the app. It's called the FYD GPS app, and it looks like that. Let's hit play. And there we go. We got FPV. So what we are going to do is I'm not going to fool around with the phone app. I'm just going to go ahead and record video. So we have some video footage. All right, because I don't have any screen record on this iPad. So let's go ahead and take off and check it out. So what we are going to check out is to see whether or not this one kilo takeoff and one kilo land work and the return to home function works and the fail safe return to home. And hopefully we have enough time to uh, put in that uh, low voltage return to home, the phase one and the phase two where that 30 meter geo fencing gets activated. All right, so let's go ahead and arm the motors. Both sticks to the bottom and out, arms the motors. And if you do that again, Wow. Okay, both sticks to the bottom and in, arms the motors as well. And if you do that again, it will disarm the motors. So just do it quickly and let go. There you go. Pushing this one key to take off button. Holding it. Oh wow, this one does not work. The other X16 and the 21 it works, but this one doesn't work. So let me go ahead and just manually take off. Whoa, brushless motor. It's got some power there. And there you go. So the one kilo takeoff and one kilo land does not work on this one. I huh, wonder why that is. Yeah, usually it works. Let's see if the speed works. Okay, we got two speeds. I'm gonna leave it on speed number one. And there you go, that is the GPS hold as well as altitude hold so let's bring it down it went up instead of coming down so let's bring it down a little bit and it's taking its time to come down check it out it is not responding right away it doesn't want to come down for some reason okay i want to bring it down to about eye level here and check out the gps lock so let's go ahead and pull it and let go and check it out, it went back to that position. So the GPS lock works, kind of going up and down a little bit, wobbling around. All right, let's see if the one kilo land works. Long pressing it, no, it's not working. No, it sent out a beep, but it is not working for some reason on this clock up. Oh, look, it is working. It is slowly coming down and making its landing. So the one kilo land is working but the one key to take off is not working all right let's put it on the landing pad so this will be our new home point so let's go ahead and check it out one more time arming the motors all right let's see one key to take off
nope that one kilo takeoff does not work guys so manually taking off once again hopefully we got some video recording I got a micro SD card on here but for some reason it does not record on the micro SD card so let's check it out speed number one Okay, that is my full yaw. This thing doesn't have a very good yaw speed. So hopefully we're not catching the landing legs in the view here with the gimbal, right? Speed number two. It's basically around the same. Yeah, all right. So let's place it right around there. Let me go back down to speed number one and hit this return to home button. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, it rises up in altitude and the remote control is giving out a couple of beeps or a single beep. All right, coming back to the home position right above it. And it is making its way down. So the return to home button works. Let's see its behavior. It is slowing down a little bit. And it has kind of slowed down somewhat. And it is slowly coming down. Whoa. Okay. Where are you going to land? Oh, look at that. It kind of corrected itself. And it landed pretty nicely too and the motors have shut off so let me turn off the return to home all right so the return to home button works so let's go ahead and rearm the motors and take off one more time and it takes off really quick so let's go ahead and see if the fail safe return to home works let's see i'm gonna go a little bit further away this time and put it right around there and let me go ahead and yaw a little bit taking the sights uh oh uh oh it activated the return to home by itself guys i did not activate that return to home i just did a little yaw and it has activated the return to home by itself Check it out, it is just hovering, it is now coming down. And the beeping has stopped on the remote control. And the battery voltage is 10.9. You know what I think this is? This is the phase one of low voltage return to home, where it comes within the 30 meter geofencing stage. So let's see if that works. All right, the lights are flashing, yeah. We are already in low voltage. Oh wow, not much flight time. So let me push it out. 30 meters, it should bounce back. No, it is continuing to go. Oh, there you go. It's rising up in altitude and it is doing a return to home. And it is beeping away. kind of a delayed reaction to that 30 meters I think I went beyond that 30 meters and look at that the beeping has stopped and it is just hovering so it is giving you time to fly around a little bit within the 30 meter geofencing radius all right so now we can only fly around inside of this geofencing I'm gonna leave it right around there that is away from the home point to see whether or not it will do a return to home when the battery level becomes 10% and it'll go into the phase two of that low voltage return to home and see if it returns to home or if it just lands in its spot. All right, let me see the recording. And I am recording, check it out. Making a little yaw. Yeah, there you go, it is beeping and it has risen up in altitude and it is moving towards on top of the home point so the phase two low voltage return to home at 10 percent does get activated to come back to the home point 
but wow, not much flight time on this one. I wasn't even able to demonstrate the failsafe return to home. Oh wow, that is not good. The battery life on this one is really bad. 8 to 12 minutes. Wow. Because of the gimbal taking up that power. And look at that. I'm going to miss the takeoff spot by about oh a few quadcopter distance. Alright, so there you go. My initial demonstration of the Bayang Toys X22 GPS with the 3-axis gimbal. Stop the recording and looks like we've been flying for eight minutes, a little over eight minutes. All right, so just got done checking out the Bayang Toys X22 with the 3-axis gimbal uh, with the GPS and tested it out with the one key to take off and one key to land and the one key to take off did not work but the one key to land did work but it took a very long time and I didn't quite realize that it was coming down until it started to come down. So a little iffy on this one here. All the other Bayang Toys uh, quadcopters, the X16 and the X21 work perfectly with the one kilo takeoff and one kilo land. I'm not sure if they pulled that function out or it's just my unit that is misbehaving. Now, also the flight time. I wasn't getting that much flight time with this one. Uh, they said 8 to 12 minutes and yeah, it is around 8 to 12 minutes. I went to stop the recording on the iPad and I got a little over 8 minutes of uh, video recording time. So not much flight time to be had on this X22 and I believe because the 3 axis gimbal is taking away a lot of that power from the battery, we are getting less flight time with this new iteration of the Bayang Toys X1621 series of quadcopters. So I'm kind of disappointed in this one because of the flight time and ooh, there's a fire going on as we are closing our review of the Bayang Toys. Check it out. Oh, it is just fuming away over there. Oh, and there's the siren. Oh, wow. Anyways, uh, back to the Bayang Toys X22. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed and I didn't even have enough time to uh, demonstrate the uh, failsafe return to home. It went right into that 30% low voltage uh, return to home where it came back inside of that 30 meter fencing area and it stood there. So that works and the 10% of battery life second stage of low voltage return to home well, uh, that worked fine. It did return to home and land on the uh, takeoff uh, location. So that works. So yeah, I wasn't able to demonstrate everything else like uh, uh, headless mode or fly it without the GPS turned on and stuff like that so very limited amount of flight time on this one although everything worked the compass calibration process was kind of weird as well uh, I tried the uh, way that Bayang Toys 21 and the 16 GPS does it, the traditional way of rotating it horizontally and flipping it over and then rolling the quadcopter, that does not work guys. So you got to place the remote control on the table, grab one of the arms and rotate it like a wand uh, in a figure eight and then it will calibrate the gyro so that was a little funky too but obviously it worked. The light went solid and I didn't get any toilet bowl effect so the calibration of the compass was correct in that manner so the instruction booklet is telling you the correct way of doing it but it was a little bit hard to understand uh, how to go about doing the compass calibration all right so that is it for now my initial test flight and review of the Bayang Toys X22 GPS with the three axis gimbal thank you so much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time